Hello, people of the interwebs. Joe here with Shutterspeak Photography. Very nice to see your smiling face again here on YouTube. So, if you are a Nikon Z9 user, with firmware 2.0, there came a new feature called Recall Shooting Functions, parentheses, hold. And then a second function called Recall Shooting Functions. Um, actually, really not very appropriately named, but I guess that's a matter of perspective, but I'll, I'll explain that to you in a little bit. But at any rate, it is a pretty useful function. It's a way to recall settings very quickly. So let's say for example, uh, and this is something that used to happen to me, so I'll use an, ex an example, a real world example of things that used to happen to me. I was shooting uh, National Hockey League. I would be shooting players on the ice. There is a goal. I'm shooting, shooting, shooting. And then it's always great sometimes to get reactions of the fans in the stands. So I'll turn around, take a look, and I'll find some fans that are celebrating and snap a picture. Now settings for the fans are dramatically different than settings for players on the ice. The players on the ice are very well illuminated and the, the fans in the stands are generally in the shadows. So being that I'm shooting on manual, my settings are vastly different for those two scenarios. So wouldn't it be great if you could just hit one button that would set you up to a predefined set of settings for your camera that you could quickly spin around, take a picture, hit the button again and be back to your original settings. So picture this, I'm shooting NHL, hockey, I'm shooting players, 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 there's a goal, everybody's celebrating, I'm getting pictures of the players celebrating, now I wanna spin around and get a fan. I push a button, one button, and it changes all my settings across the board to be able to take pictures of the fans. Take a couple of pictures of the fans, hit that button again, and I'm back to my hockey player settings. So great feature, right? It is, it's built in now. We have it in firmware 2.0. I'm gonna show you how to set it up. But like all things Nikon, there are a few head scratchers, like the way they're named for one, and a few other head scratchers that are kind of a little bit of uh, gotchas with this feature. And while we do have this page in the supplemental manual, it really gives us very little information and insight on how this feature works. So I'm gonna go over it all with you, but before we get started, I'd just like to say thank you. I appreciate you watching these videos and taking the time out of your day to learn a little bit more about your Nikon camera. And please, if anything in this video helps you out, please help me out by hitting subscribe, ring that bell so you get notified of future updates to the channel, and please leave me a comment. I love hearing from you guys, and I try to answer just about every comment. So, hey, with that all out of the way, let's deep dive into the menus and I'll show you how to set this all up. Okay, so I am here on the back of my Nikon Z9 and we are gonna go down to the custom settings menu. Scroll on down to your pencil and then F controls. You're gonna go to F2, custom controls shooting, and then you're gonna pick a button to program it to. I like to program it to F3 because it's a button that I don't use for anything else. Uh, so it's convenient for me. So if we click on F3, you're gonna have a whole list of things that it can be programmed to. And you're gonna see there are two recall shooting function options. And very interestingly named by Nikon. So what this one does is, recall shooting functions, is it's gonna go you a whole list of things that you can set your camera to so that when you press and hold the button down, all of your settings to your Nikon camera will change for as long as you are holding the button. Now, once you st stop holding the button, you will revert back to your original camera settings. Now, this menu option, recall shooting functions hold, doesn't work by holding the button. Okay, so we can have this nice list of things that we can choose. And when you press the button once and release it, your functions in the camera change. And then when you press it a second time, your functions will go back to the way that they were. So let's take a look at what we can set here. So we can set our shooting mode. So um, we can choose like, let's say for example, manual, we can turn them on and off. Um, shutter speed, we can pick our shutter speed. Uh, we go a little faster, 640th aperture. Aperture is interesting because basically what we can do here is if we set this all the way down to the lowest possible setting, 
what that will mean is regardless of what lens we put on, whether we put on an f2.8 lens, an f1.8 lens, uh, an f4 lens, it's always going to revert to the lowest possible number. So if I put an f2.8 lens on, uh, hit that button, it's going to be f2.8. If I put an f4 lens on, and I hit that button, the recoil shooting functions button, it's going to be f4. So it's always going to be my lowest, widest aperture. Exposure compensation, auto ISO sensitivity settings. I'm going to put this at uh, 1,000. And I want auto ISO on. Metering, that looks good to me. Matrix metering. White balance, I like. Oops. I like auto. Um, and again, ticking these on and off will shut them on and off. Autofocus, I'm going to go with auto area autofocus. I only shoot people for the most part. I almost never shoot anything other than people, so I set it to people. But you could choose auto or animal or vehicle or off, up to you. Focus tracking with lock on. That's how sticky your focus is, and that looks pretty good for me. And release mode, we can set it to high speed, low speed, but... Three looks pretty good to me. Um, single frame release mode. I'm going to change that to, no, I'm sorry. That's, that's, oops, where are we? Continuous low speed. Okay. All right. Now, at this point, press menu because you are done. Do not go to save current settings because you will erase everything that you just did and save whatever settings you currently have loaded in your camera. So don't do that. Just go over to here, press menu, and now you're done. Okay. Now, if your camera was set up with all the settings that you wanted and you just needed to save those settings, you could use that save settings and you don't have to go through all of those menu options. Okay. But for most people, that's just going to serve to confuse them because they're going to set up a whole bunch of things, hit save, and none of them are going to be the right way. I just find it super confusing. All right, so now that we have done that, our button is now set up. Okay, so one other thing you do need to be aware of is depending on what modes you choose, certain things in your recall shooting functions menu may become unavailable. So let's say, for example, I went into programmed auto. You'll see that shutter speed and aperture are no longer available. Well, that's because in programmed auto, the camera chooses to shutter speed and aperture as it sees fit. So thus, you can't set those because they're unavailable. Now, if we went into aperture, we can't set the shutter speed, but we can set the aperture. And that's because shutter speed is handled by the camera. So if, for example, I go to manual, now I can choose everything. And the same would, of course, hold true with shutter priority. You can't choose the aperture because in shutter priority, the camera chooses that for you. So if you see something grayed out, it's really because of something that you have chosen in the list that makes those other items unavailable. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that one little thing so you didn't get confused. Okay, so we are back here on the back of my Nikon camera, and you see I have some uh, Star Trek memorabilia set up for a display just because, well, I can. I'm making the video, so hey. I can make it whatever I want. And if you know me, you know I'm a bit of a sci-fi buff. Hey, check this out. Yeah, look. Got my picture taken with Captain Kirk. How cool is that? Anyway, moving on. So we have the camera set up in shutter priority mode. One two hundredth of a second, F8. Uh, we're in autofocus on pin focus. Right, so this is great, but all of a sudden I need to change my functions really quick. I'm going to hit that recall button right now, and let's see what happens. And I just hit my recall shooting function, and you see there is, by our phaser on the left-hand side of the screen, there is now an icon of a camera right there. And that is indicating to us that we are in that recall mode. And you'll see I drop down to my lowest aperture, which is F4. That's exactly what I wanted, 640th of a second. We're in auto ISO, so it put us at 2,500 uh, to balance out that scene. Autofocus continuous in autofocus area, manual mode, everything exactly the way we wanted it. So let's hit the button again. 
And you see, we go right back to exactly the way we were before. So super handy, super convenient. But there are a couple of gotchas. So what are the gotchas? Well, first off, the focus mode does matter. So I am in autofocus continuous. And you see that it was able to change pin to area, which is what we had in the settings. But if I wasn't in autofocus continuous, what would happen? Now I'm in autofocus single. Let's see what happens. Now you see when I recall our shooting functions, autofocus single does not change to continuous. Pin can't be changed because it's a setting of autofocus continuous, autofocus area. So your autofocus method may or may not change depending on what settings you're in at the time. The same would hold true, of course, if you were in manual focus. All right, so your focus method your success here is going to depend on what you were in to begin with. Okay. So here's the next gotcha. While I'm in this recall mode, the settings that I change here will stick. So if I change my aperture, which is currently F4. Okay. The next time I, let's, let's just say I change that now to 5.6. Okay. I'm going to, drop out of recall and you see my settings go back to the way everything was. I, uh, I don't know why we just jumped to 7.1 there. That's a mystery to me. F8, you know, we're bouncing in between the two. That is definitely a Nikon mystery right there. Um, but one thing I will say is now if we go back to recall, you'll notice that we are back at 5.6. So the changes that you make stick, which is kind of unfortunate in my opinion. I wouldn't really want to see that happen. I would really rather see you need to go back into the menus to change those because you could accidentally change these while you're in recall and not realize it. So to me, it's, you know, that's an engineering decision. I don't agree with it, but I am not an icon engineer. I can just call it as I see it, right? Okay, thanks for watching. If of course, anything in this video helped you out, please help me out by hitting that subscribe button. Um, by all means, leave me a comment if you have any questions about this. If you know the channel, you know I try to answer most of the comments. Um, it's not always easy if you're watching this video a year from now. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer and it's a little more difficult to get back to those older comments, but uh, certainly I do my best to try and answer everybody. So by all means, reach out and say hi. I appreciate it. I love hearing from you guys. That's it. Thanks for watching YouTube. So, hey, until next time. Bye-bye.